Greetings of the name, greetings of the name of the Most High. I've I've just uh, went on a political rant. I I had to cut that because now I'm getting into the to the meat. So um, you know, here we are. A lot of you have uh, been been. I may want to make sure this weekend that I that I I filled you with podcasts because I know how it is to not to have everything like you want to hear somebody or to not have anything on the radio when you when you need that radio. I understand how that is, and hopefully. This is not the radio, live radio, but hopefully this will make up for it. You know, Zef Daniel here, the Zef Report. Um, I started off talking about the, the Zef Report numbers going way up because we've kind of, I, I think I know why. It's because people now want to know what this is because they're so freaked out at all the events and how quickly everything has become what it's become that they're wondering what reality is. They're wondering, because in a natural reality, it would, it would evolve slowly. It wouldn't be just boom, 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 right? Like set changes. And I tried to explain this to you a long time ago, that we don't live in a contiguous reality. It's things are being interdimensionally changed, and we're also a part of that as well. And uh, so, they, you know, I think they're tuning in for that reason, because they want to find out just... So, so from here, you can, you can figure out how quickly this could go to the ultimate bad, right? How quickly it could go from where we are today to the ultimate, I mean, horrific uh, bloodbath. You understand it could happen overnight, just, just to that, to the level where everything is, is horrific and everything is hell. You understand that. It doesn't, it doesn't need an organic pro- process. And if, you know, if, if people don't, um, you know, pay attention to reality, they will be in a bloodbath. Their own. And it's their fault. And it's because they just refuse to yield. They just won't, they just will not yield. And, you know, you can't make people yield. They're just going to, until they figure out that there is no hope, they're not going to change because they, 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 they're just wondering why their system is breaking down. Um, and, I mean, it may not be breaking down, say, in Hollywood. They've they, they, they got big bucks going on over there. So they're probably happy they sold out. But... Everywhere else, it's pretty much going down the tubes and, and very quickly for certain people. And, and, you know, the fix is in for the United States and the citizens thereof. Now, I did talk about um, how Obama has been, now you have a major journalist now, award-winning Cy Hirsch, involved in, in confirming what I said about Obama and ISIS from the beginning. But you also have to include the Pentagon. You have to include uh, Hollywood, big part of ISIS. And... Um, and the beheading of Christians these people are doing, that Obama's doing, while claiming to be Christian. And I, I, I'm just, I, I, only in America, with the stupidest people on earth, could you even get away with something like that. It's confirmed that, that the United States has been involved with the creation of ISIS. Now, that's confirmed. But it goes further than that. Training, merchandising, marketing, recruiting, bringing into the United States, training here. For what purpose? For the purpose of having a standing army that can strike anywhere they need. When they need a terror attack so they can push a political agenda, they just have to lift up, they just have to, you know, it's, it's just a matter of uh, an email. Boom, then, then Obama comes out with his speech already done. Uh, Gotta get the gun! Or whatever, whatever, his, whatever he wants to push. Need more security, TSA! Need to humiliate the people even more so I can feel like I'm much more powerful. Whatever. Whatever the reason that motivates these people, uh, terror is the way that to, to, to go to get what they want. So the real terrorists are your, you know, obviously your leaders. You know, besides that, every war we're in, we have both sides. So we, we, we bludgeon ourselves, putting our soldiers there while we have the opposition as well. Uh, it, it's it's sick. It, it's so sick. It's it's so that means we just simply sacrifice our soldiers as as blood sacrifices to their god Satan. That's the god of the military, isn't it? Satan. Not that who runs things. Well, I can talk here till I'm blue in the face. I'm not going to do it this time because I, I did 20 minutes of that, and we're not going to go there. I mean, I, I just I give a little summary. Uh, looks like I got a lot of people on my side. You know, I mean, back when I was saying all this stuff, 
people just thought it was nuts. Now we got Cy Hirsch, we got, <clears throat> we got uh, documents, we got all kinds of stuff coming out on the connection of Obama and ISIS. Or, or if you will, Obama, the architect of ISIS. It's that serious. It's extremely serious. And it's all coming out. So I predict there'll be lots of terror strikes because people are so stupid they think that it's not us doing it to ourselves. Any terror strike that happens in the United States, including the last one in, in San Bernardino, is us doing it to ourselves. I hope you understand that. You've been warned, people. You've been warned. We do it to ourselves so that you can be further punished and more rights can be taken from you. That's the only reason there's terror attacks. To lock it up and make it a totalitarian global world government, whatever. That's not my concern. My concern are souls and, and the spiritual life of people and the eternal life of people. But uh, what you're facing is very apocalyptic. It looks very much like the book of Revelation. It looks very much like God's going to fulfill exactly what he wrote in that book. And, and so you're, you're, you're just going to uh, either keep your head in the sand. I mean, if you work in Hollywood, there's, you're, you're partying up, man. You're, you are so happy today. Everybody's making money out there now. So you're not going to be concerned when, the, when, when things finally, you know, when the, when the big EMP attack takes everything offline. And until that day, you won't be concerned until there's literal carnage in the streets. Right? Hollywood will be the last to know. Wall Street will be the last to know. Washington, D.C., boomtown, boomtown, baby, boomtown. The more evil they do to you, the higher they go in, in lavishing luxury. Because you're so smart out there, America. You really stand up for your rights, boy, I tell you. Now the newest policy from the left is kill all the white people to make sure we have a safe world. I mean... The only people that would believe something like that would be morons. And so you have, a, you, have you know, uh, 150 million morons in this country that, that don't have an IQ above maybe 60, 70. Maybe they were born with a higher IQ, but that's where they slipped to in order to be able to drink the Kool-Aid and be hypnotized and believe all this stuff. You have documentation hooking up America as the creator of ISIS, and then look, it, it's all there for people to see. And look, they think that Obama's trying to fight ISIS. That requires a very, very, very low IQ. Someone that cannot look at facts and information and process it properly. They get on Twitter and they try to shame people. They go, oh, you're just a tinfoil conspiracy theorist. And you show them the document. You show them the evidence. And they go, oh, you, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> You need to be dead. You need to be. Then they want to, They give you death threats. They want to kill you. And there's no knock on the door by the FBI. If you said anything like that to them, there'd be a knock on the door. You'd probably be arrested. And you should be. You, yes, that's right. It should be the same across the board. But it isn't. I get proof every day of the complete disparaging discrepancy. Now, this is the world that we predicted you'd be in, and here you are now. Everything else I predicted will probably come to pass. If it does, you won't be here, but where will you be? Um, you think they're going to let Trump take over the presidency? I, I don't know about that. I, I've, it's going to be exciting to watch, but... Uh, They've won everything else, so be prepared for total defeat because they've won everything else. You might, if you want to survive, like, physically, then you'd have to think about leaving the United States, probably. I don't know where you go. Or Russia, I don't know where you go. Yeah, if, 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 if you don't care, uh, if God has you staying here for a purpose, you're, 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 you're helping people, you're, you're, you're teaching people about the gospel and stuff, and your time comes, you're going to die anyway, so, you know... If it's a guillotine, well, guillotine would take a while before they roll those out. But, you know, anything can happen. Things can happen very quickly. That, that's why I want to get into the prophetic here. But make no mistake, things are bad. Things are worse than bad right now. In terms of the potential for human life in America for, for a survival of, of many humans. And I don't want to see it. I, I say this every day. I'm a man of peace. 
I get mad at these people because I see what they're doing to all of us. I mean, we're committing suicide. And I don't want to commit suicide. And I, I get angry about us committing suicide. I don't want, but I cannot convince people um, who have been indoctrinated uh, about anything until there's a bloodbath. And, and when there is that bloodbath, then they will listen. Or whoever's left, which may not be too many people. But until that time, I, the train is speeding down the track. I can talk to them and talk to them and talk to them and tell them and prove it 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 through Bible prophecy, prove it through God's word in every, in every, every which way, through, prove it through history, prove it through um, evidence, and they won't see it. Uh, in Washington, uh, D.C. and in Hollywood, they would laugh at you. They have never had it better, they'll say. Uh, Quentin Tarantino said it best. He said, President Obama is the best president of my lifetime. And he believes that Obama is an ultimate patriot and a wonderful, marvelous uh, human being who has helped tremendously this country. It has no, no plan, no nefarious plan for world order, none of that stuff. He just wants to help America. And Quentin Tarantino has now been able to do his dream movie, and he thinks it's because of the climate of America and how Obama's done such a great job and how they, they now have a country they could be proud of, like Michelle Obama said, uh, where they weren't proud before. And this is their utopia. This is, this is what they've been working for. The way it is today, with all the hatred and all the division, to them is mana from heaven. Because that's how they, they, they want... Because they're authoritarians, they want to rule over other people and shame them into, you know, like Michael Moore and Tarantino, they shame you and shame you and shame you for being white or for being privileged or for being uh, whatever kind of idiotic thing, caca, they come up with in their heads. Uh, they love to be able to lord it over you on Twitter and things and make their movies and make their millions of bucks and then complain about capitalism and complain about uh, all you, you people out there that are out of work, you deserve it. And uh, while they lavish themselves endlessly in their, in their wealth and their fun. And then you go to Tarantino's movie, a guy who obviously, you know, um, you know where he's coming from, a, pl a place of total delusion and unintelligence. And, you know, um, and, and then you pay him the big bucks. <laughs> It couldn't be better. I mean, t times today are the best they've ever been. Well, it wasn't white people going to the Django Unchained thing and then cheering on the killing of the white people. I mean, it doesn't matter. They, these people maybe deserved it, obviously, racist and slave owners and all that. But the point is, it was the structural idea of, of cheering on the white, white people being dead. And now it's broadening to anyone, anywhere. So whenever there's, uh, you know crime, uh, where white people go down, they don't have to prosecute it. Same thing as Twitter. If I, they, you a death threat on me, I can report it to Twitter. If nothing happens to them. I see them the next day. So I'm done reporting because I report. They make claims they want to they kill Trump. That was one of the other things they started doing. Kill the kill Trump stuff. And they were saying it every day. I would turn them into Twitter and nothing would happen to them. If you said that about, say, Hillary Clinton or whatever, you wouldn't be on Twitter anymore. They, they, would, they would round you up and, and spit you out. So there's, it's really lopsided here in this country. And let me explain what the battle is. The battle really isn't political. The battle is, is, is because there's a battle between Satan and God, you know, for the souls of men. And that's the battle in America. At... You know, the sort of ultra-left revolutionary types, they serve Satan. They serve Lucifer. Saul Alinsky dedicated his book to Lucifer. It's no secret. It's no secret. And that would include all your Tarantinos and the rest of them. They serve Satan. There's no secret there. Same thing with Obama. They serve Satan. No secret. His actions speak louder than his words. The propaganda pieces they put out about his quiet faith and all that, are bunk, they're lies, to make him look a certain way to, because they, there's still people that are fooled, that think he's some kind of a godly person that has the best interests of Americans at heart. 
if only these awful racists wouldn't be bothering him, he could really do some good things here. I mean, people actually believe that. So there's not much I can do here, you know, but, but this has all been prophesied that people would go stupid here. Their IQs would be lowered. Yes, much lower, much, much lower. Well, I'll just look at his brain capacity. This, they were using 10% of their brains are now using 4%. Because you have to do that and throw logic out the window in order to follow the program. Then it, make, then it makes sense to you. Otherwise, if you thought about it or had the capability of reason, which God has given man, then you would not be able to understand the things happening and you would you know, obviously rail against it. Well, because more than half the country doesn't rail against it. Uh, it, it, it can only mean that they're stupid and or been dumbed down. I guess that's the way you like to put it. They weren't born stupid, but they became stupid. You can't, you try to have a conversation with them. Yeah. Good luck with that. So you can talk about the weather, you can talk about sports, but the minute you get into anything of substance, you know, spirituality, politics, anything like that, uh, they're completely, you know, Kool-Aid, you know, the... They basically are, are parrots parroting the bullet points, and that's all they can do. They have no, well, they haven't had to use logic in so many years. I think that capability has really atrophied within them. It's just like the zeitgeist people. You can't, there's nothing I can do there, you know. I have people, they, they write me, they call, you're, you're just a bigot and all this. So I'm not a bigot. I'm, I, I, I have the, I'm an educated person that actually has the capability of reason, which you have obviously given up. But you're the bigot. You're bigoted against me. You're bigoted against anyone who has the capability of reason. That, that's the, the, the thing. I don't, I, I, there's no, in fact, I'd be the opposite of a bigot because I don't have anything personally against anyone or anything or any institution. There's, I, my eyes are on the Lord. It's, so there isn't anything like that, any bias like that going on, actually. I'm just stating the obvious. The ob the re stating the obvious. But if you state the obvious, then they will label you something or another to try to shame you from the truth, from thinking, from whatever. And what the obvious is, is that this country is in serious, serious trouble right now in terms of being infiltrated and, and then overrun from within by, ter by terrorists controlled by the state, obviously, that pretends they don't know anything about it. Uh, it's a terrible conundrum you're in. And, you know, if let loose, it would be a lot of dead people. So you have a real cancer on you right now. To act like it doesn't exist... Well, you can get away with that up until the time where, you know, the thing shuts down. You know, when, 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 the, when the country is shut down, it's, it's kind of like France. It's always going to be in a state of emergency from now till, the, till, the, till Armageddon. Well, make no mistake, an Armageddon of, of sorts is coming. Oh, yes. You can count on it, absolutely. Well, when I saw Germany commit suicide, and, and then, then this sort of Angela Merkel, I'm not going to call her Angela, you know, screw that. Angela Merkel is lauded in Time Magazine as some kind of heroine. I mean, what, what are you going to do about it? You know, a humanitarian who's concerned about people. No. What's happened is that the, um, they've, 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 they're doing a replacement thing, you know, it's, it's terror. What's happening is terror. I, I can't even believe it that I'm, I'm sitting here knowing what I know. I wish I didn't know what I knew, but I know the truth about all this. And it's uh, the same thing as the Babylonian captivity with God. I mean, if you go with God, you understand the truth about a thing, you know, and you understand what they're really doing. So Angela Merkel would be a traitor to the German people, and she's being lauded as this great humanitarian. And Hitler was too. Did you know that Hitler was also Time Magazine's Man of the Year? Human of the Year, Person of the Year, whatever you want to go. He was on the cover of Time Magazine. And Time Magazine also said God was dead when I was a boy, and that really hurt, my, that hurt me. That, that, that traumatized me and bothered me ever since. I never got over it. It became the central theme that the state has determined that God is dead. I mean, the whole thing is a war against God. 
Everything that goes on in America is at that which is against God and a war against God. Everything they say about dividing people, racism, political correct, and the rest of it is a war against God. Everything they do, everything they say, everything they think is a war against God, the God of the Bible. Jesus is that God, that's right. There's not, you know, Jesus and God, it's God, the Lamb, the ruler, the king. There's no king and then God over here. It's the king is God. That's all there is, God. Well, people don't understand the language of the Bible, so they don't understand. <laughs> the same people that don't understand, don't understand again. My people perish. From ignorance, Lord, they perish. My fellow countrymen in America perish because they're ignorant. But they're ignorant because they refuse to see the truth and refuse to use their God-given logic and refuse to reason. They're tainted by propaganda. What can I do? There's nothing I can do, folks. I don't think my mission has ever been to save the United States. I think it's basically to illuminate the truth about a thing so that people could go to the light and be saved, you see. But the devil fights hard. He doesn't want to lose even one soul. But make no mistake who your enemy, that's your enemy in all these people. It is Satan within them that is your enemy, that's right. In the form of demons or whatever, they're part of that, 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 that queendom, actually. It's a queendom. They're, they're, they're all under the spell of the Queen of Babylon. That's why I did the Queen of Babylon song, because it was Revelation 18. Revelation 18's been on my mind lately a lot. There's a prophetic reason for that, and maybe you should look into it. Then the next thing was Merry Christmas. In other words, shucking off the PC, the politically correct, and just going with a heartfelt Merry Christmas. In other words, I love you. A blessing to you. And I just came out of me like, I, God made it happen. I, he chose the court. He did it all. He did it all. He just used me as a vehicle because I don't know where that came from. It just was there one day. And it was there right at Christmas. Now or the day after Christmas. But still you're very depressed, aren't you? I know. And that's really what we have to deal with. I have to tame my anger more. I, I tell you, I get so angry and my tongue, Lord, forgive me for my tongue. I repent and I repent for my anger. I must not get, per I must not let these people get under my skin, Lord. Folks, I confess to you my sin. I've been too thin skinned and I've allowed, you know, people like Obama and, you know, I saw a picture of John Boehner almost exploded with anger, you know, the Congress, the traitors, the, the bringing ISIS in here and training them to kill us. I mean, and then having people go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, America, yeah. And I, and I just don't, I don't know what to do. I, I, it's so far beyond nightmare, beyond a horror movie, that it, it's, it's so far beyond Rosemary's Baby at this point. I mean, it's out. You know, it's so far beyond the gang stalking, the whole T.I. thing. That's actually, w w those were the good old days for me compared to now, a nation of zombies. <laughs> oh, boy. But there's bright spots. Like I say, I am looking forward to seeing Donald Trump go up against uh, especially Bill Clinton uh, and Hillary, go up against the Clinton crime family machine I I'm, I'm just I just I, I know they're very scared of him because she keeps talking about him all the time and I said, you know, if I were advising her I would tell her to shut up about Donald Trump because everyone who's really gone up against him and talked about him a lot, they've gone down in the polls to nothing. The more she talks about Trump, the lower she goes, if you've noticed. It's the weirdest thing with him. It's some god thing, you know. It's definitely a supernatural thing. But the people who talk about him, the the person who is bugged the most by by Donald Trump is Jeb Bush. He spent, well, depending on who you read, Donald Trump cited $60 million or so. Uh, I just read another better, more credible article. He spent $133 million. I don't think Donald Trump's up to speed. $133 million is down to 
after spending $133 million of his super PAC. Ad after ad after ad. And he's, he can't get above three. And the reason is because he can't get Trump off his mind. Trump has rattled him. And had, had he not done that, made it about Trump, he would probably be a lot higher in the polls. Um, you want to see Bush versus Clinton in another Bush-Clinton thing? Really? They're on the same page, by the way. They're, they're both the establishment. The establishment is criminal, obviously. Uh, look, I don't care. I'm not a crusader for, for you know, for, for the law. That, that's people like, you know, Judicial Watch and people like that. I'm, I'm really, you know, it's really more about uh, finding the truth and abiding in the truth, you know. But I see a lot of bad things happening to people around me. You know, I see a lot of, lot of, lot of pain and a lot of suffering going on. And that's going to get a lot worse. To the, and I just wor worry what's going to happen to people. Because I don't think they're going to be able to handle what's coming. You know, and they're, they're, they're going to be so kind of traumatized and so sort of have such cases of PTSD. I don't know. What, what are you going to do when they figure out that, you know, it, all of a sudden there's no, there's, they just have to sit there and wait and to, to be told what to do. I mean, what do you think? Well, for one thing, folks, I don't, I have a way of, I, I have a, uh, a, you know, a, sort of a talent at, at um, seeing beyond, you know, and a lot of times I get freaked out by things that are going to happen in the future, as if they're happening right now. And, you know, that was when I did the Revelation 18 song, it was reacting to something in the future. And so I'm getting a lot of this revelation. I never used to get a lot of revelation stuff, but it's, a lot of it's coming through. And so I have to look at that, at me as like this vehicle and, and then step aside of myself and then look at myself and say, oh, this is happening, and then mention it. You do it with it with it what you will, you know. But um, there's some very scary times ahead. And the Lord said very clearly, Come out of her and be separate so that you are not partakers in the plagues that are about to befall her, the Queen of Babylon, which is, which is an allegorical, metaphorical representation of the world system that we have today, of, you know, commerce and business and government and whatnot. Is there any way that you could, you know, maybe see that, or, or is it just a day to do, hour to hour, minute to minute thing, okay? So whatever comes up on the internet, that's the next thing you look at, rather than looking at what's going to happen, it's, 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 it's too scary, isn't it? It's, it's easy to go day to day on the internet. Yeah, well, I don't blame you. It's too scary. The idea that the scariest thing of all is what if the book of Revelation is true in terms of the bloodbath, that's this, the numbers of death, the, 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 the amount of plagues. What if it's, it's the scariest book on planet Earth? What, is the, what if it's true? And what if we're seeing it fulfilled right now? You have episodes like the Tribulation Saints. Now Christians being guillotined for their faith. That also lines up with the Book of Daniel prophecy that the saints are overwhelmed. Before the forever kingdom comes in or this new age that's coming in, this, I don't mean new age like new age. I mean a, a real new age. It's not even an age, it's the conclusion age. It's, they say it's the age of Aquarius where Lucifer will reign. Lucifer would never reign in an age of Aquarius because Lucifer is strictly an age of Pisces ruler. Or in other words, draconian. In astrological circles, the Aquarius does not represent draconian. So that they have a skewed view. They think Lucifer is the god of reason and is the real God, or whatever it is, and, and it's it, it, and the Brotherhood of Man and the John Lennon song and all that. No, he isn't. He, he's the old serpent, the dragon, the devil. That that's a, belongs to another age, not the one to come. The, if anything, the age of Aquarius rep, really represents Jesus Christ. Not it's the other way around. You have it backwards. <laughs> 
But still, on our way there, folks, it's uh, some scary stuff. If you look at the book of Revelation, which I've been looking at, and you know, I haven't really even been led to be there in a long time, but I'm looking at the book of Revelation, I'm looking at the book of Daniel, I'm looking at Zechariah, I'm looking at uh, the Psalms, you know, I mean, I'm looking at things, the apocalyptic literature in my Bible, and um, spontaneously, in other words, I'm not going there because I'm, I'm going there because I'm, I'm just going there, I'm being led to go there. So I'm like, Lord, is, so some things are coming up, you know, the, the, the plans they have. When John F. Kennedy got killed, assassinated um, by uh, the military industrial complex, he said there's a plan to enslave every man, woman, and child. And then it was like an eyes wide shut type of thing, and he got killed. I guess the whole thing is to conceal this ruler of the earth, of this dark age. This ruler of the earth would not be in an age of light. Only in darkness can the ruler of today rule, which means that the idea that they're working for a Luciferian New World Order that would be the age of Aquarius would be by... I don't, I don't look at astrology to determine anything. I look at the Bible, I look at prophecy, I look at, you know, the Lord. But I'll just say in their own world, they have it wrong because you would never have Lucifer ruling or the dragon in an age of Aquarius. It wouldn't happen. It's the whole... I can't even believe someone would be that stupid to say something like that, since it's completely anathema to everything that they believe. The, the only, the rulers today, Lucifer, Satan, are the rulers of the darkness. They don't rule in light, because in light you can see all the deception. They rule by deception, by double-double. No, not just a simple, it's double-double at a minimum. It's, you know, chess. You know, five, ten steps ahead. It's, it's that kind of thing. That way you never see it coming. Right? It just arrives on your doorstep. Ugh, I don't like that. And, well, then you're going to have to obey us. Here, get this truck. Okay. We're going to take you to safety. Okay. Where are we? We're out in the middle of the desert somewhere. Get out of the truck, all you, okay? Uh, all right, Joe. Well, that's a 50 caliber machine gun. What are you doing? And then hamburger meat commences, but it's out there where the jackals, you know, the coyotes could go eat feast on the meat. And then away they go. Never made it to that FEMA camp, Joe. Well, nope, just doing my duty. Just taking on, following orders. We can't handle these people. Don't have provision for them. We're not set up for it. <sighs> you don't want to go through something like that, do you? Where you're taken out in a, in a truck that they tell you they're going to take you to a safety and medical and whatnot to, after a traumatic incident of some sort, and then they just machine gun you down. They're supposed to be on your own side. You, you don't want to go through that, do you? Why don't you go to the living God and stop all this other stuff? Go to Jesus, you know, and go into the light, go into eternity, and, and just leave this. Forget it. I mean, that's what it's all here for, to, to sufficiently make you understand that you cannot possibly survive this. You, you're, you're a fool if you think you can survive it. The only answer is Jesus Christ. That's the only place who is God, who is the life, the way, the truth, and the, you know, the way, the dimension, and to go there. What other option do you have that's besides trying to fight it out on your own? It's every man for himself at that point. It's, well, is there a force called the Wolverine somewhere you could join up with? I mean, this is Red Dawn, isn't it? But it's worse than Red Dawn. Red Dawn had like, you know, the Koreans or whatever, you know, coming here. This Red Dawn is your own people are the ones who do you in. The people you trusted, the people you paid with tax dollars are the ones planning on killing you. It's terrible. I mean, how can you stand it? Oh, if it's because we don't see it that way. You're paranoid, Brother Z. I'm paranoid. I'm paranoid. I'm paranoid. I've seen world history. I've seen what's happened. I've read the Black Book of Communism. I suggest you read it one day. 
I've seen those. I took Brother Thomas seriously with what he was saying. This, everything Brother Thomas said, this is, has, he is the only one on the planet Earth who actually, the only human being ever to make such accurate predictions. And look, isn't that amazing? And look at the disrespect he gets, at the non-starter thing, I mean, the non-follow-through, you know, the, the fact that people pay no attention or very little. You know, he's got a following of, of you know, lambs and stuff, you know, people that listen in here too. That, but, I mean, th- that he's completely under the radar, which is actually a good thing, and bro T should count his blessings there because God has protected him, you know. If he became a big voice out there, you know, I think, I don't think he'd be here right now. These boys play hardball, dudes. These guys are not... These are, this is, this is the major leagues here. You're dealing with some, the, the, I mean, these people make Al Capone look like a choir boy, okay? There's no amount of carnage that they, 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 they would even, they, they would never eat, eat, there would never be even a concern if they were going to kill five million people tomorrow. They, they, they not, not, there would not be a, a, even a half a tear. It would be just a very calculated thing they would do to get their way. To, it's anything, anything and everything to get their way. Anything in the way gets mowed down. Well, if you want to cut your best deal, move to Washington, D.C., start, you know, buttering them all up and get yourself a job uh, in the propaganda office and you'll, you'll probably be taking, you'll, 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 if that's what your goal is, to live longer than the rest of them or to beat the odds at home here on the homeland, then either go to Hollywood and... Um, well, Hollywood is kind of brutal. I mean, they, they put people in prostitution promising you that you'll be able to be a screenwriter if you just do some knee time and whatnot or an actor or, or director or whatever, and then you never get off your knees. <laughs> I mean, that's the... You know, it's a hard... It's brutal, man. It's brutal. It's brutal. It's... it's I have, I've never even done a podcast about how bad it is or the things I've seen. Um, you know, I, I just couldn't because it's just so big. I, you, you wouldn't believe me anyway. The people that run it are absolutely the most ruthless. They're not, I, I can't even describe them. They're just like the people at the Pentagon or the people at the, 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 in the White House or whatever. They're, they're just completely ruthless, um, murderous, predatory uh, perverted um, snakes. And Hollywood's a big snake pit. And basically, you, they throw you in there, and you, you know, you're, you, the only way you're going to win the game is you've got to go as low as possible on the, uh, you know, check your morals in at the door because there's, there's no place for more morality, no place to have a conscience. You've got to be absolutely, you know, beyond Machiavelli, you know, if you want to succeed there. Because you're judged on how on who you take out, not just how talented you are. You're judged on how low you can go. You know, in the uh, there's no place for morals. Let's just put it that way. You you want to swim with the tide? You jump into that orgy and you do whatever. But you got to be the worst one there, <laughs> whatever that means. And even then, there's no guarantee. But all those things are like a prerequisite. Look, then you read about them, the chairman of Universal, and you see this gal, and she seems like this nice, sweet, innocent woman from the UK that's just basically a good businesswoman, and she's just been a good entrepreneur, and she's kind of jacked her way up into, uh, you know, the chairman of Universal, and isn't that nice that she's made so much money? Um, You know, if you believe all that propaganda and all that BS, then that's your problem, but... If you read the trades, the trades are always going to tell you that all these people are as pure as the driven snow. Of course they are, because that's what they're paid to do. If you want to go out and be a copyright uh, artist or copyright person out there putting propaganda out about executives and directors and actors, there's a lot of jobs out there available for that. You could probably do quite well. Work for the variety of the Hollywood Reporter, and you just have to go to these uh, soirees, and you have to be compromised yourself so that they can trust you. And then, you know, when you see whatever you see, you know, it's whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. As long as you can have that attitude, uh, you know, but there's still no guarantee you're going to survive. 
<laughs> you know, because people just wind up dead all the time. I don't know. It's just the most bizarre. I, I wouldn't go there. I, I'm so happy my my little girl doesn't live there. You know, little girls, grown-up girl. I'm glad she doesn't live there. I'm glad my ex-wife doesn't live there. I'm glad my ex-brother-in-law doesn't. He does live there, but he's not there like he used to be, running a restaurant and having to schmooze all these entertainers, you know. I'm, uh, I'm glad I'm not there, yeah, because it's, uh, I got a good look at it in, uh, in, in, the, you know, in terms of the satanic landscape in Malibu. The only thing in Malibu that disturbed me, I mean, it was a beautiful place to live, and if the people weren't all hypnotized, they'd be, uh, you know, be great, you know, be great, but they are, you know, there's a pecking order there. But um, the thing that was disturbing was the, 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 the Christian churches there, and like some of the people that have come out of them. Not Mel Gibson. He's not really disturbing to me, but there's another guy that came out of that that I... Yeah, it's really something. But uh, the, uh, the other thing that was kind of disturbing was seeing the, uh, the people that did the Jesus show on, on uh, cable. I mean, it was on... What well, was a Nat Geo or something? It was like the, the Bible, and then they did Jesus... The Burnett's, they live out on Point Doom, which is where Bob Dylan lives, and other people that got a great surf spot out front, but you have to live there to have a key to get, so you can go out and use the, you know, the, it's up from Paradise Cove. And then there's pictures of them schmoozing and having cocktails and whatnot, and schmoozing Hollywood types. You, you think they're fooling it, but I, I couldn't watch their, 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 their show on TV. I couldn't watch, I physically got sick to my stomach looking at it because I could see through it, you know. I, could, I, can, I have this weird talent, I told you. It's, the, it's been a blessing and a curse at times. But no, I won't be having cocktails. I, I'd have cocktails with anyone else there, you know. I would have cocktails with, well, who, who lives there? Uh, Kate, Caitlyn Jenner lives there. Nice house off PCH. I know just where it is. Um, sure, I'd go over there and have coffee way before I would have coffee with the Christians. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be fine. <laughs> Let me try that wig. <laughs> I, I could use some hair. Um, I would be, yeah, you know what I mean? And, and people that are like worlders, I, I always got along with the worlders until... Until the game got, you know, until it was like, you've got to be one too. And I'm like, I don't want to be a worlder. I'm not going to worship Satan. You know, pretend I don't and go through all this whole, this whole game. But, it, but it, there's no option. That's the way it is on earth. I understand that. But look, I'm trusting the Lord now. I'll probably go back someday to take a survey of it. If the Lord had a walkabout, you know, do a prophetic walkabout. Well, then ideas come, and then I spout them off on the podcast. That's, that's what passes for, prophetic, for the prophetic these days. Now, you'll find that we're pretty accurate. We, I, am very accurate. Um, I'm, the most accurate I am is when I don't intend to be accurate, when I'm just speaking about things, and then you know, things come to pass that were not intended to say, oh, let's stop the presses. This is a prophetic comment, blah, blah, blah. Oh, look, it confirmed on Thursday at 2.55 a.m. Blah, blah, blah. You know, that's what, that's what the world is. That's what, uh, that's what passes for prophecy these days. The prophecy club. Yeah. We'll go say some pithy things and, and then we'll be lauded. Well, your real prophets out there will never show up at the prophecy club. Ever. It will never happen. They're in Topeka, Kansas, from what I understand. Well, that's what we used to call it, Topeka. Topeka. But it's called Topeka, as far as I'm concerned. It's a place that you, that, you know, when you, if you grow up there, you want to leave. If you're living there, you're plotting your way out, or you're, you're, you're insane. You, there's no just nice, gentle little farm to live on in Kansas. I mean, it's not going to happen. You know, the, 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 the satanic thing is roiling around in there like a tornado, just like it's going on everywhere. This satanic thing you cannot fight. All you could do is go to the light, to Jesus Christ. When I was out there in L.A., I couldn't fight it. It was beating the crap out of me, and, and I had to keep leaving places and 
going to other places. I could I couldn't, you know, was, you call it gang stalking, I call it persecution, whatever, but I I couldn't fight it on my own, folks. I had to keep leaving and selling a house and moving here and moving there. And uh, it was a terrible ordeal. I went through a lot of suffering with it, a lot of suffering. I, I didn't understand why people that I had trusted just a minute before would turn on you if you did nothing to them, if you if you were just a force of good in their lives. Why would they turn on you like that and then have it be justified, then act like they're not even the same people? The answer is because they're not the same people that you knew before, that it got switched. People don't understand that. You see, there's a, there's a subtle, sublime truth that if you understood that and you really knew that was going on, it would make your life a lot easier, a lot easier. But because you can't believe that, because you can't prove it, um, or you can't catch it, is really what it is, then you're um, subject to thinking this is a contiguous, unfolding reality that's just, you know, completely um, objective and true. You know, what you can touch, feel, and perceive is all true. What you've been told about the world is true. What, how you think, and I mean, when you're just really uh, asleep and, and a hypnosis victim. You're hypnotized, you're sleeping, and you, you don't even know it. You're in a kind of a lucid dream that you agree this is reality and you don't question it. And, and people, that's, that's the majority of Americans. And then you see where they end up, you know, believing anything, believing stuff that no one would believe, you know, that, 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 that points to them being under control. And uh, it's, it's really sad. But I can't focus on that because, you know, it's always, my whole life has been embattled with, like I say, those events. Here's where it began. It begins with things like the Cuban Missile Crisis and it goes on into the Kennedy assassination. It goes on into, you know, the whole British invasion, you know, being on drugs and, and the whole, uh, you know, having the, the parents and everybody else unravel as just a bunch of degenerates. Um, you know, seeing all of this stuff as it is unfiltered which is what the 60s was all about. I mean, and then it's never really recovered. Here we are with the same people that were rioting in the colleges in the 60s. They're, they're running the presidency now. You know, they're running the country now. They're running the world. I, um, all I can do, all I can do is say, okay, that's, that's to be expected. It's an evil world, you know, a fallen world, and it's behaving in a fallen manner. What do we look we don't have the choice. We're here. And we've got to make the best of a bad situation. That's basically what it is for all of us here. We have to make the best of a bad situation. I, look, whether you have money or not, or whether you have your health and you're young or not, or it does, you know, whether you have a good job or not, whether you have whatever you have, it's, it's subject to change without notice. I mean, you, you know, the main thing you've got to realize is that you know, we're going to die anyway. We can't make a home here because we're going to die anyway. So knowing that, it should be easier for you to forge ahead and, you know, and, uh, you, you go toward the truth and, you know, leave this confabulation of fiction behind. I mean, if it's here at all, the only reality that I can see is that it's a test for people to see what they will choose and what they won't choose, you know, on one level. You know, that's just on one level. But it's obviously much more profound than that. It, it's just that um, we're going into a dangerous period where people's hearts will fail from fear. And I don't want that to happen to you. I want you to say, as the, as the evil comes upon the earth, and you ain't seen nothing yet. But if it does, then you'll be ready for it. You'll say, oh, I'm, I knew that was going to happen. You know, Lord, I'm with you. And sometimes we just got to like, just go with the Lord and you know how scary it is and just trust the Lord and say, okay, I'm just with you. And if, if he takes us home, he takes us home. But it's a very scary time. And I don't see how you could look at this world and think 
that the ru- rulers of the world system don't have in mind a um, sacrificing the uh, the people they're ruling over for their to save their own hide. Uh, hides. You know, that's kind of you know that's like the typical Shakespeare tragic play, right? Um, you know, it's human nature. My prediction is that they will do everything in their power to not allow the people's voice to be heard, to squelch the people's voice and to push them down with a jack boot. And, and, and that if there, there's a healthy rebellion against that, I think you'd be looking at a civil war. A really bloody one, which seems to be the kind of fight Obama wants in the end. Well, he he won't have to get his pretty little hair mossed. He'll he'll be in a bunker, and you know there'll be command and control, and you know they'll just kind of watch the uh, the whole thing go down the tubes, America. And he can congratulate himself, saying, "Look, look what I caused! I did that." <laughs> yeah, he sure did. He he put as much division in the country as has been seen hasn't been seen since the Civil War. And he's, he's done it methodically. He's done it uh, in a very careful way. He's done it uh, in a way to give himself maximum deniability and maximum uh, uh, security uh, on the issue that he would never be uh, looked at as anyone who created all this. It's, it all happened uh, without him even being here. He just is here to remind you that we haven't always been perfect. We have some dark things in our history and we must address them. And so he creates the crisis along with his you know, friends at the, the planners. And um, then he addresses it as from the moral high ground that, that look, look, see what we have, racism. Well, that was here, that's something we've always had to deal with and we haven't really dealt with yet. And racism to him means give me more power. That's what it comes out to. I need more power. Give me your guns, I need more power. And... Um, I've watched this. I've watched this game, this, this game of uh, the presidents playing this, you know, this double-double or, if you will, several moves ahead. And he's right. You know, when it comes down, whatever it is, a terror attack or, the, you know, any, anything that comes down, he has um, no culpability because he's, he's so far ahead. You know, he, he, has, he comes in to make his comments of something he himself creates. And I, as if he did, had nothing to do with it, he's just finding out about it now. And he's having to kind of address the nation on something that should have been, should have been taken care of. It should have been taken care of a long time ago. You know, and I have to come in here and try to address it. I mean, you Americans need to do some soul searching, putting himself above the rest of us when he's the one that created the division. You see? It's brilliant. He never has to take responsibility for anything. Everything is happening to him as a victim. He's just the dutiful Christian, quiet faith in the White House, moving quietly along, trying to improve the lives of American people and give them health care and give them, you know, teach them about the other guy and schools and how evil guns are and, and racism and you know, teach them so that they can become the PC police of their own state. That So that one day we're going to have a, a perfect state and eradicate all the free thinkers and all the people that would disagree. And then he calls that a success. A, a zombie nation, uh, I think for Obama and the left, would be a tremendous success. A nation of automatons, of robots of dutiful slaves. It would be a, a dream come true. Well, I'm here mainly today. Uh, and I, I, I did mean that. I do want to get Brother Thomas on here pretty soon and some other people, but I'm here mainly today, the day after Christmas, which is Saturday, the, the Sabbath, of Shabbat Shalom. I'm here because I understand the aftermath of this momentous date of December 25th. Today is the 26th, but I see a tremendous 
thing that's moved in the spirit. It's also full moon right now. Very bright full moon. And so I see the, oh, oh well, that's not going to bother you, Christian. It's the, you see, it's, it's the others. <laughs> the at war with God people, oh, that full moon really excites their spells and rituals, if you know what I mean. So you have a huge spiritual warfare thing going on right now. And it's really for the soul of, uh, you know, of, of free people everywhere in the, in the entire world. That, that they, they're, they're making their move to take those souls and to lock them down and to, to make them obey. Meaning they would have no more free thought, no free will. They would just be here to serve the machine. They themselves becoming the ultimate enslaved. Their children, should they have any, uh, belong to the state and should be uh, collected to, 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 to have the best education. I mean, if let go, they might take 25 years, but I mean, this is what you would end up with. It would look like that, that film. What was that film called uh, with Ethan Hawke? I forget the name of it. Was it Gattaca? No, it was uh, a futuristic thing. Well, you know, these were all cautionary um, allegories. Which sci-fi usually is, I'm sorry, I'm yawning because it, it was so so early, but I, I had the inspiration to talk to you just about the fact that, you know, Jesus is the true light. And there you'll find solace and there you'll find comfort and nowhere else. I'm sorry. If it were true, I'd, I'd be a Buddhist. You know, because, because there's a lot there that makes sense to me. So I would be in, in that. A lot there that's appealing to the natural mind of a, of a man, yes. But, uh, you know, you all ultimately does not work because it, it relies on self-works. It's a, it's a works-based uh, religion. If it's works-based and performance-based, there's nothing I can do that will merit uh, the things they're trying to merit. In other words, it would not work out for me. I would not be able to accomplish it if it's works-based. I agree we must have works, but uh, well, where I need to go, I already am. In other words, I'm, the goal of Buddhism, the goal of you know, all these religions, I already have accomplished the goal. It's been accomplished in me. There's nothing more for me to do than that regard. But in terms of self-works, I need to improve. I fail every day, but I have the forgiveness, which is what you don't have in Buddhism. I have the forgiveness, but I also have the light. I have the perfection. In other words, I'm already receiving the benefit of being a glorified saint of God, son of God, but in a future glorified state of sinlessness. I'm getting some of that influence in now. But still, I've, you know, obviously I have to deal with my weaknesses, my, you know, anger at people for being, you know, well, I look at the Lord and I say, you know, obviously, Lord, these are, you know, what, doubtful they're going to go with you. And he'll say, no, they won't. And uh, so I shouldn't pay any mind to it. I shouldn't get overly upset about their existence upon the earth. It's just that if they have children, if they have other friends and they're influencing, you know what I mean? It's luck all the numbers that are against God here. But it's as it should be because the Lord comes to destroy the works of the devil. And since most everything is the work of the devil, you know, there's a problem. There's a war. Well, this whole thing isn't for the faint of heart. I mean, what's bothering me right now is, besides that, is um, feeling we're in danger, I suppose, and, and feeling like I can't do anything to help anyone. You know, so it's kind of like, all right, I'm going to preach to the choir here. And um, just hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll just, you know, walk this thing out with Jesus. And it's going to be okay. And I know it will in that regard. And I know that I'm not responsible for souls, although I get very frustrated. But I know that, you know, when I prove something beyond all doubt that, that I want, the response should be, okay, so... Everyone lays their lives down for the Lord and walks it out, you know, and, and, and is saved and is, is alive. But instead we get confusion. Okay, 
well, without a bitch, shalom. I'm, it's, you know, if I messed up in any way, shape, or form here um, to, to really help you in any way, because I haven't been very specific today, uh, my voice has been resonating, and it's that frequency that can, can help as well. You see? So even if I've blown it with my words, I still have the sound of my voice, which has some kind of thing in it. Well, you, you know, you tell me about it all the time. I can't tell you. And I'll see you next time.